Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Foster, um, on August 7th of last year, the President said in part, um, the steps we took this year to reform the health care system have put Medicare on a sounder financial footing. Reform has actually added at least a dozen years to the solvency of Medicare. In making that statement, he's referring to CBO score, which includes the Medicare tax that you allegorically, is your allegorical $100 that you referred to earlier. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, although the estimate of the 12 years was our estimate and the Board of Trustees, not the CBOs. Okay, well he's using the allegorical $100. Of the okay, then when he signed the bill, um, in his signing statement, uh, he said this legislation will also lower costs for families and for businesses for the federal government, reducing our deficit by over $1 trillion in the next two decades. In making that statement about the deficit, is he not also using the Medicare tax, your $100 allegorical payment? Uh, yes, he is. So when is it, you can say it, it, it is legitimate based on the scoring to say that you can add a dozen years to solvency of Medicare or that you can reduce the deficit, but it is not correct to say both simultaneously. Is that correct? Almost. <laughs> um, both will happen as a result of the same one set of savings <coughs> under Medicare, but it takes two sets of money to make it happen. It happens directly for the budget deficit from the Medicare savings, and then when we need the money to extend the hospital insurance trust fund, we have a promissory note. It's an IOU. It's not a worthless IOU, but it is an IOU, and Treasury has to pay that money back, but they have to get it from someplace. That's, that's the missing link. Okay. Um, it, you can't, you just can't do both at the same time. This reminds me, I, um, um, Karen Bass, former Speaker of the California Assembly, isn't here, but um, when, when I was in the California Assembly, there was a tobacco tax proposed. And, uh, and the idea was it was going to reduce smoking and reduce the deficit. And as we went through, we realized you can claim one or claim the other, but it's not going to do both. Because if people keep smoking, you'll reduce the deficit. If people stop smoking, it's not going to raise any more money, and 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 you won't. Uh, you may stop smoking, but you won't reduce the deficit. This this is the same sort of thing. We're taking this same hundred dollars, allegorical hundred dollars, this same tax, and in one side saying, oh, we're going to reduce the deficit, and on the other side, oh, we're going to extend Medicare. But it just simply cannot do both. Let me ask one other in my remaining two minutes. Um, what I also heard you say, I believe, is that. Um, the consequences of the downstream consequences of, of the payments, the Medicare, the reduced payments that doctors may get, aren't necessarily factored into all the scoring. Is that a correct description of sort of what you said? Uh, yes, sir, that's correct. Uh, directly, we build in the impact on lower Medicare expenditures. Now, there are potential secondary impacts. Uh, if the payment rates become inadequate, if nothing is done about it, and providers exit the market or refuse to treat Medicare patients, then you have some not very pleasant potential consequences. You, you can't find a doctor. Uh, your, your, your local hospital will no longer treat Medicare. Uh, we do not model those secondary impacts. Right, yeah, okay. And that, to me, is one of the great problems with this, with this bill. Um, now, this is all anecdotal, I admit, but since the bill has come out, in California, insurance costs have gone way up, in part because of the mandated additional coverages. Uh, there have been, I have been approached by a number of people working for companies who've said that their company is either going to, re, they were getting Cadillac policy, and they're going to reduce the policy, increase the cost. Uh, other companies are going to drop health care for all their employees in order to have them go into the exchange. And a number of doctors have told me they're either not going to accept Medicare and Medicaid or they're simply going to retire earlier. So these are a lot of ac actions and activities that private individuals are making um, I out there in the world today, have already made as a result of, of this health care bill. Those reactions are not really modeled, is that correct, in, 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 CB in the scoring? Uh, generally speaking, they are not. Uh, we do have a, a lengthy set of caveats about uh, various concerns that we 
were aware of, but which we had no way of estimating. Right, and that to me, just before my time runs out, is one of the great, huge faults in this bill, is that it does not include the real world impacts that real world people will do as a result of this miserable bill. I yield back. 